kids, did you know that Jesus was Jewish and all of his followers at the beginning were Jewish? As we time travel back to first century Judea, where Peter just had a vision from God that reveals Jesus came to save not just the Jewish people, but everyone of every nation, of every culture, of every time. But first, I need to tell you a little bit about what it means to be a Jew or a Gentile. The Jewish people were the great nation God promised to Abraham. They are descendants of Jacob, also known as Israel, Abraham's grandson. The word Jew probably comes from Judah, one of the largest tribes of Israel. The word Gentile means the people or the nations and just refers to anyone who isn't a Jew. Back in biblical times, Jews kept themselves separate from Gentiles. They were God's chosen people and they had a particular set of laws and customs that set them apart from everybody else. Jews weren't even supposed to eat with Gentiles. Jesus was a Jew and all the earliest Christians were Jewish. Many of them probably supposed that Jesus only came to be the savior of the Jewish people. In Acts chapter 10, a Gentile named Cornelius, who loved and respected the God of Israel, received a visit from an angel, telling him to find a man named Peter on the rooftop of a house in the city of Joppa. Cornelius obeyed immediately and sent three men to find Peter. In the meantime, God was going to prepare Peter's heart to take the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. Let's see what happened to him. One day, Peter had a vision, a message from God he could hear and see. Peter saw heaven open up and all kinds of animals were lowered down to the earth. A voice said, Get up, Peter. Eat. But Peter was Jewish. His people believed these animals were unclean and not good for eating. So Peter said, No, Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean. Then the voice said, Do not call anything unclean that God has made clean. Peter heard this message from God three times. He knew it was important, but he had no idea what it meant. Just then, three men arrived and the Spirit said to Peter, Three men are looking for you. Go with them, for I have sent them. Peter met with the three men and found out that they were sent by a man named Cornelius, a powerful soldier. He wasn't Jewish, but he followed God and he wanted to meet Peter. So the next day, Peter went to Cornelius' house. Once he arrived, Peter was honest with Cornelius. He said, You know it's against Jewish law for me to meet with someone who isn't Jewish, but God has shown me I shouldn't call anyone unclean. So why did you ask me to come here? Then Cornelius told Peter the most surprising thing. Three days earlier, he had had his own vision from God. A man in shining clothes appeared to him and told him to invite Peter to his house. When Peter heard this, he said, I realize now that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came on everyone who heard the message, even those who weren't Jewish. Peter was astonished and said, No one stand in the way of them getting baptized. They've received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Peter thought he knew all about people like Cornelius. He thought Cornelius wouldn't be accepted by God because he wasn't Jewish. But after spending time with Cornelius, Peter realized he truly loved and obeyed God and that God accepted Cornelius and his whole family and everyone who chooses to follow Jesus. The Jews did many things differently than the Gentiles, and one of the main things was that they ate very differently. The Old Testament has many dietary restrictions for God's chosen people, telling them things they were and weren't supposed to eat. Many observant Jews of today still follow these practices. You may have heard of kosher food. Kosher means food that follows all of the eating laws God gave to his people. They couldn't eat pork or shellfish or any kind of reptile, among other things. This vision would have been a strange experience for Peter. He'd been a faithful Jew his whole life, and now God is sending him this vision telling him to take his pick from all of these animals he wasn't supposed to eat. He protested, and God told him that if God had called something clean, then it wasn't Peter's job to call it otherwise. Now, you may have guessed that this vision wasn't really about eating. Three Gentiles are about to knock on the door because God has led them there. God was showing Peter that even though he was a Jew, God was sending him to the Gentiles. This had never happened before in the Bible. For centuries, God had been commanding his people to stay apart from the world. That's because God has been preparing them to be the special nation out of which the Messiah, 
Jesus Christ our Savior would come. But now that purpose had been fulfilled, and there was no more reason for Jews to have to stay separate from Gentiles. Their job was done. Now this doesn't mean that someone can't be a Jew and a Christian too. Remember, all of the first followers of Jesus were Jewish, and so was Jesus. And there are many Jewish Christians today who practice their Jewish religion and also follow Jesus. It's a good thing to be Jewish, but it can't save you. Jesus came so that everyone, Jew or Gentile, could follow him and be saved. We're going to be learning a lot more about God's plan to save the world through Jesus and how he used the nation of Israel to do it. We're starting at the end of the story and we'll be going backwards in time through the Bible the next several weeks on our adventures. But the big question for today is, can anyone follow Jesus? Well, the answer of course is yes. Now, that might seem simple to you, but think about some of the people out there in the world. There are people who grow up in other religions, believing and being taught some very unusual things. There are people who don't believe in God at all. There are people who've done some very bad things. But it doesn't matter what someone has done or where they come from or how they grew up or anything. Jesus came so that absolutely anyone could follow him and receive salvation and a new life. Let's, let's close with a simple prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us this message today, letting us know that we are different, but it doesn't matter because as long as we believe in you, we are one family. And we hope that you help us learn more about other people and learn our differences and accept that it is okay to be different. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week.